So initially, it looks like a safe solution for a robotic cell. However, as we examine the sequence of events, we'll highlight some of the critical areas where the implementation of their safety measures falls short. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan. I'm a certified TUV safety engineer for MPSA and also participate in the ANSI standards writing committees for machine safety. And I'm Dave, an eh &S specialist with MPSA. I've spent a large portion of my career focused on helping clients identify and mitigate machine safety hazards in their workplaces. So let's dig in. At first glance, the cell appears to be well guarded and compliant with current safety standards. We see fixed perimeter guarding at the proper height, along with light curtains, which are commonly used safety devices for these types of applications. So the video shows a routine machine troubleshooting issue. There's an operator at the panel, an observer, and a line attendant who enters the cell to work on the equipment. Let me also clarify that this scenario depicts routine intervention during normal machine operations, distinct from service and maintenance tasks. And service and maintenance tasks would require adherence to lockout tagout procedures for preventing the unexpected startup, or per 29 CFR 1910-147. So right here, Ryan, the light curtains are enabled. They correctly trip to red when the worker enters the cell and breaks the plane of the light curtain. But this is where we start to see some of the key design gaps in this seemingly safe work cell. One of the first things that stands out to me is that the machine operator proceeds to reset the light curtain without having a clear view inside the cell. Instead, they use an observer as a lookout who ultimately gets distracted by their phone. Yeah, those few seconds were all it took for the entire safety system to, to break down, which is more of a common problem than you think. Yeah, this observer shouldn't even be needed with a proper safety system. The worker entering the cell should have exclusive control over the equipment to ensure their safety. Yeah, to address this lack of exclusive control, several solutions uh, should have been implemented. One common approach would be to have used a uh, trap key system where the worker takes a key upon entering, preventing the system from being reset uh, from the outside. Yeah, that could work. Uh, another option might be a double reset system where you're requiring a reset to be initiated from inside the cell by the entrant before an external reset could be performed. Mm -hmm. We could also consider proximity controls such as pressure sensitive mats or safety scanners. Those types of devices would detect someone's presence inside the cell. Yeah, and it's, it's also critical to understand that while light curtains are indeed uh, a safety rated device, uh, their application in this particular scenario has limitations. And the current setup doesn't prevent someone outside of the cell from resetting the light curtain, even if someone is still inside. So light curtains really do have some technical limitations. A better implementation might involve a reset button located with a clear view into the cell mm -hmm. or a light curtain blocking device that prevents reset from outside while someone is still inside. These shortcomings really highlight the importance of conducting a thorough and, and proper risk assessment and validation of, of the safety control system. Uh, this assessment should have considered all of the routine tasks, including the seemingly minor ones like entering to, to adjust the fallen box. Uh, I think a proper risk assessment would have identified these design gaps and, and led to a, to a safer design. Mm -hmm. And these risk assessments are based on established machine safety standards such as ANSI B11.0 or ISO 12100. These aren't just random opinions. Mm -hmm. These standards often specify requirements for elements like visibility during reset procedures. Right, so if you have machinery with safety devices like light curtains and guarding, you must ensure that a comprehensive and validated risk assessment is in place to really guarantee that they are applied correctly for all of the anticipated tasks. I mean, this scenario shows that even with seemingly good components, improper application can lead to significant safety risk. So to learn more about conducting comprehensive risk assessments and implementing effective machine safety solutions, 
At your workplace, we encourage you to visit the MPSA website. There you'll find valuable resources and insights into our proven process, which helps you to proactively identify and mitigate machine safety hazards, ensuring a safer and more productive work environment. Don't forget to like and sub subscribe if you found this valuable app. Yeah, let me start over. Hold on. To like and subscribe if you found this valuable application. And if you uh, set it back up again. Man, I keep screwing that up. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this valuable. And if you have application questions for Dave and I, reach out to us on our website.